Records. Uh, blackboard. Let us see how many syllabus. Uh, professor? Yes, sir. I think uh, for last week's lecture, you uploaded your 4300 class lecture instead of our 3300 class lecture. Did I? That's what I think the link was. I'll double check for you. I'll double check. Sure, there's no problem. Anyway, so, you know, that's a UART thing and then VGA and then, you know, uh, midterm is going to be on the November, November 18th, right? Then the project, you're gonna deliver this project on the week 15. So that means, you know, if we start from today to week 15, so how many weeks you already have? You have 13, 14, 15, and you know, this week, right? So you already have around three to four weeks. So it's gonna be the project due. And how are you gonna do it? It's gonna be demo plus presentation as you guys are doing with what? With uh, normal labs, okay? So that's basically our map for the rest of this course. Any questions so far? So we can start moving to the what topics and so on. Do you have any questions so far about you know this uh, this map in front of you? For the project, are we going to get like a, an assigned project, or are we going to be able to show you uh, an idea of a project, or how is that going to work? <coughs> We're going to talk about the project, but you know, before we're talking about the project, I want to know if you have any question about the three other objects. Uh, no question on my end. Anybody else? Do you have any questions so far? Okay. So, Professor, I had a quick question. Uh, it's regarding the VGA. So I'd assume you'd be teaching it Monday. Would we split it between our lab presentations and? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. VGA is really easy. It's not like maybe half an hour. You aren't even going to take like half an hour. Okay. The whole you. idea that, you know, I will give it to you, then you will just go practice, you know? Okay. It sounds good. Okay. Any other questions so far? Oh, by the way, Danush, I talked to uh, Hussein. Yes. And oh. I think he doesn't have a problem. It's fine. Fantastic. Okay. So you just inform him it will be done. Anyway, okay. so you know, you are you artist today. So you art, you know, we have something that's called RX and TX. Okay, I'm gonna go through it now. I'm gonna show it to you from the internet because you know the code is everywhere. And then you know the VGA, I'm gonna also describe it to you next week with the lab, as you know, the Nushaskin. Um and the midterm is going to be in 18th. Midterm is going to be also in greater school. We're going to have the whole entire day. You know, what is exactly we need from me? I have to give you the quiz uh, grades. And I'm going to work on this weekend for grading uh, all of this uh, quiz stuff. Because I'm busy these days with uh, some work with NASA. And then, you know, let's talk about the project. So the project is the following, okay? Still, you know, we have groups, right? And every single group, it has people to work uh, together as a, as a member of the group, right? What I want you guys to do is the following. So I'm going to open now in front of me the list of the groups. And from there, I can tell you group A, what you should do, group B, what you should do, and so on. So the course documents, announcements, I have here. I, we have A to K group. So group A. Group A, okay? What exactly you're gonna do is the following. Do you, you have two options. One option, you try your own project or I will assign you a project, which way you prefer. Group A, Tristan, Samuel, and Kingston. 
I don't know. What do you guys think? I mean, I, I'm fine with a sign. Me too. <clears throat> what about the third uh, member? I would assume he would say yes because, you know, two of you said yes. Two out of three. So, yeah. if I will yeah, assign... Yeah, we're good with this. If I will assign it, you know, the, the project, it has to have three different things to be included. Okay? You're going to use the VGA and then you're going to use the UART plus you're going to use the finite state machine and whatever we have learned so far in the, in the lab assignments. Like this up-down counter and you already have the finite state machine and so on. So that's basically the target of this uh, project. What exactly you can do? You can do one of the things. You can uh, build hash function processor using Verilog. What hash function? You can try SHA-3. Is there any code for this in internet? There is a ton of codes in internet. Do you want to build your own? That's perfectly fine. What is exactly important for me? Integration. What does it mean integration? What is the scenario you're going to do here? Are you going to push the data from the UART to the hash function? Then the hash function will uh, digest the data. Then you will produce it in front of me in a screen. So then you know you used all of them, right? Somebody will come and say, but what about finite state machine? Finite state machine used for describing the hash function and also describing the VGA and describing the UART. Do you have any question regarding this project? Uh, no, professor, thank you. So group A will work on the SHA-3 using Verilog. Okay, group B. Khaled Danush, I believe. And uh, Christian. Huh? Uh, and Christian. And Christian, yes. Professor. You're right, Christian, yes. So you like me to assign the project to you, or do you like to do it by yourself? Uh, assign yeah. if you could. Mm -hmm. Okay, if I would like, if, if I will assign it to you, I will ask you. To do the same thing, you're gonna use the VGA and UART and finite state machine. But what will be the target this time? I can say build AES. How many of you heard about AES? It's advanced encryption standard. Advanced encryption. Standard. It's a symmetric key algorithm. What scenario I would like to see? UART is pushing data to the AES encryptors, then it will encrypt it. I will see it on the screen. Then the data, you will decide to send it back to be decrypt. You will take the encrypted, you push it into the AES, you will describe, you will put it on the top of uh, another screen showing that it has been uh, decrypted. So let's have encryption and decryption mechanism. Is there any code for this? There is a ton of Verilog code and VHDL code and v system Verilog code and internet. Do you like to write your own? You are welcome to write your own. It's not really hard, it's a piece of cake. Any question? Professor, what's the time frame for this project again? So the time frame is gonna be from this week to, uh, and then you know you're gonna present on the week 15th on Wednesday. Okay. And we can show you some of our rough drafts beforehand. Yeah, sure. Okay. Every time come and say, you know, hey, because you know, we are almost done, right? You can just come and talk to me, you know, here, you know, I, this is what I'm doing, this whatever, whatever, right? Other option you have for A and B 
you can bring any game. You know, I remember like a year ago or two years ago, the some teams came with a very fancy game. You know, they used the VGA, and they made some stuff like you know. Do you remember this jumping game? Like you know, you already have obstacles. You try to jump out of it. You know, it didn't work. Then you will hit it. Then you know, you will get scored down. If you hit it, you know, you score up and so on. Of course, you know, you are welcome to add the VGA, uh, sorry, the not VGA. You are welcome also to add the seventh segment display. Seventh seg, seventh segment display. So, you know, wh one of the game they made, it was really funny. You know, you already have the eight digit, right? So you already have here a bunch of buttons and, you know, a bunch of buttons for, you know, uh, the second player. The first one, you know, and here is in the screen, here is in the screen. You know, the, you know, you will have a target from the first digit. You will try to jump out of the second one and you jump out the third one up to up to the end. If you do it, then you know it will increment your score. And then, you know, if you hit it, then you know the game will, the console will be moving to this guy, finite slip machine. Then you know, the guy will try also the same way to the other side. If it works, then you know he will just go ahead and do this. Is this really hard? It's not really hard because at the end of the day, you know, you are using also the up down counter thing that we are doing and shifting left and shifting right. So it's up to you, which way you like. Danush, Khaled, Christian. I think the one you assigned is pretty interesting. This one? Uh, I like yeah. this one. Yeah, the crimson seems fun. We'll, just, we'll check it out. Mm -hmm. By the way, all of you know what is your target, right? Low power, small resources, right? This is basically the, the thing that, you know, the themes of this course for me. You work in low power, you do optimization and resources. And you know, every time you are doing this while you're working, I want you to spill it out in the report to show that, you know, oh, you know, you understand what you're doing. Don't forget, you're gonna write an abstract about this. 250 words or something like that, we're gonna submit it to this uh, risk. So, you know, three of you and the last also will be the supervisor, which is me. And I'm gonna assist you and help you all the time, okay? Professor, yeah. what's the time frame for the abstract portion? It's gonna be in December or something. So before, okay. you know, that's a part of your grade. If you, when you submit it, you know, they accept it, they reject it, it doesn't matter, but you, you did your best and you apply, you know? Mm -hmm. It's because the RCA have their own deadlines, that's why. Uh, I can show you. Uh, Google risk uh, 2021. And then, you know, share screen. Share screen here, right? Where's the blue line, you know? Uh, schedule, still. Application, still. Home, still. Program, still. So normally they open it in December. Which is the time frame that you know we're gonna fin finish the course, right? That makes sense. Yeah, correct. Thank you. You are welcome. So stop sharing now. Uh, continue. Share screen. Okay. Group. C. Where's group C? Group C, Brian, Kush, and Sean. Do you like me to assign the project or you like to have your own project? Um, since Kush is not in today, like in the class, is it okay if we just maybe email you by tonight? And we ask him and we'll, we'll just email you and tell you what we want. Okay, postpone. Okay. Um, Brian, did you want to say something? Or? Brian? Just have it assigned. Oh, you wanted to sign? Okay. Yeah. So if, if you like me to assign a Brian, you know, what about you, uh, Kush? Do you like me to assign? Well, Kush is not here. That's why I was trying to say. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Sean, do you like me to assign? Uh, sure. If, yeah. If two of you said assign, then you know, assign, you know? Okay. No, I was just, need, yeah. No need for postponement. Okay, that's fine. Okay, so you know we're gonna go into what? So you guys like security more? You like image processing more? Do you like what? Tell me, what is your preference? Um, uh, I don't really mind anything. Yeah, anything Okay, so 
I mean, I like security, so I can give you a lot of security stuff. So you know what? Make sure to. to hash function. Okay. And right. you know, you're gonna use, while you're doing the demonstration, I want you to think about the scenario, okay? The scenario is gonna be used. So you're gonna work on what's using UART, VGA, seven seg, and of course, finite state machine. Okay, same thing like who, like the group uh, A, but group A work with SHA3 or working with SHA2. Okay, Brian? Oh, Professor, I had a question. Yeah. Sure. Uh, are we allowed to see the other group's presentations as well? Or is it just presenting? Everybody, everybody can watch the presentation. Get okay. this time, you know, all of us will be sitting and listening to everybody. And you guys will have the right to ask questions and everything. Okay, sounds good. I want this one to be very perfect because you know, for you guys who would like to have an internship in summer, you just contact me and I will try to arrange something for you. So if you are doing really good with Verilog, and then you know, there's a lot of chances for you to find a very nice uh, chance for summer internship, okay? And then you know, group D. Before I go to group D, group C, do you have any question? Brian? I'm fine. Brian? You're fine, okay. Group uh, D, do you like me to assign it? Group D is Michael, Elvis, and Chris. Do you like me to assign it or do you like me to, um, or do you like you introduce on a project? Um, professor, uh, I was wondering if we can have a couple days to think about a project that we want to work on, and if not, we can have you assign us one. Uh, but that would be counted on the time, right? Yeah, we would probably only need about two days to figure out what project uh, we want to work on, but this is due, you said, in three weeks? Yeah, so that's why, you know, if you know your project, you don't need to waste your time thinking about it, right? Yeah, it shouldn't take us too long, maybe a day or two, and then, then I could send you an email uh, requesting a project. Post pond, and then you know, still you have to use F finite state machine, UART VGA 7 sig. Those are the four. The switches and everything, yeah. So those are, those are the four. Um, the four. Those uh, have to be used, yes. Those have to be used because, you know, that's basically what we are using, right? Okay, for sure. Thank you. Okay, so anyway, group A, B, C, D, E. So group E, Hong and Anthony and uh, Sangdu. So you guys, you like me to assign it or do you like you to introduce on a project? I think we would like to have you to be as, uh, assigning us. Yes, please, Professor. Okay, that's not bad. You know, I like this. So, you know, I can give you something very simple. Okay, very simple. Yeah, we'll take anything. So, finite state machine, UART, VGA, 7 sec. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, do you like image processing or do you like um, signal processing or do you like uh, security? Oh, security sounds fun. I love security too. Yeah. Um, I mean, mm, okay. Security. I love security. So, um, what should I give you? One second. Um, let me see. Do you want traditional security or do you want something new in security? Uh, maybe. Wait, say that again. Traditional security standard, or do you like something new, completely new? Uh, I'll take the former. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Well, <then. laughs> yeah. Anyway, let me think. Because uh, I'm printing something in the city printer. Anyway, so. Uh, so. Elliptic curve. 
Elliptic. Elliptic curve. Uh, public key algorithm. Okay, so you're gonna build elliptic curve public key algorithm. There is a ton of the elliptic curve algorithm uh, is already uh, everywhere on the internet using very long. Okay, perfect, thank you, professor. But you know, are you are you gonna build your own? That's perfectly fine. Do you want to use people's stuff and you know, you optimize it? That's perfectly fine. But you know, I like people to be honest. What does it mean? So that means if you use some people's stuff, you have to what sign them. When you say that I use this code and it was written by this guy, I made the certain modification. The code had been improved by this amount. That's not bad, you know? That's still, you know, appreciated. Make sense? Yes, Professor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, what did I actually do? Okay, so group uh, EF, right? Group F. The group F is uh, Rohit, Anish, and Andrew. You guys like me to assign the project or do you guys like to uh, introduce your own idea? Can you sign it, please? Sure, sir. What about the rest? Yeah, assign, assign would be great. Okay. So, you know, in this case, I would say group F, still you're gonna use UART. You're gonna use finite state machine. You're gonna use the VGA. And you're gonna use the seven sig. Of course, you're gonna use the switches and you LED. You know buttons, everything. You know, I like stuff like that. You know, so if you know how to use all of those guys, then you are perfectly set. Okay, so security or signal processing or image processing. Uh, I'm I'm interested in security and image processing. I like image yeah, processing, same. but you know, I want to be realistic with you. I don't want to waste your time too, because I, how many units you are taking this semester? You know? Right. So I don't want to give you something heavy and then you know, you're gonna spend a lot of time, you know? Yeah. So I want something more practical. So my whole idea, I want you to learn integration and also to learn how to adapt other people's code as well. You know what I mean? This is something is missing and you know, we need to work on it. So, uh, how many of you heard about RSA? Right? Did you hear about RSA? That's the encryption method, right? Yes, Ravish Shamir Adelman. So RSA, I want you to build the Encryption decryption mechanism. It's a public key algorithm. Okay, sounds good. Thanks, Professor. And your target, you know, low power, low area. You know what I mean? All right. Group G, right? Peter, Chad, and Stephen. You guys like me to assign the project or you guys like to bring your own project? Uh, we're okay with being assigned the project. Mm -hmm. Everybody's fine, right? Peter and yeah. Steven, right? Yeah. Okay, so you guys in favor of security or you're in favor of image processing or signal processing or video processing or what? Would signal processing be hard? You like signal processing? Sure. VGA. Uh, Seven segment display switch. So for signal processing, what we can have. Do you like to build the FIR filter? Have you heard about FIR? I have. Yes, I think you guys have, have you taken signal and systems or anything? Oh no, I've, I've taken signals and systems. That was about a year ago. Yeah, I'm passing a link now. Uh, here, there is a very nice article. It's about oh, it's... you know building a high-speed finite impulse response digital filter. 
So mm -hmm. you're gonna use this filter, you try to push data maybe from the UART or maybe from the ADC, but I'm not sure if you can have the capacity for learning ADC or not. There is an ADC by the way on the board. If I have more time, I can even show you the ADC and PWM. Okay. Okay, so you know, there is something here I need to add. We might, if we have time, but I think if we don't, you know, it's not a crisis. But you know, if we have time, we can also learn BWM and we learn also something is called ADC. So the board itself, the A7 or, you know, Nexus 4, one of the PMOD is actually working as an ADC. Okay, so, you know, that can be used for such a kind of thing. And in PWM, maybe we can make a small experiment. I can show it to you as well. Okay, so uh, that's fine if you can build FIR filter. Is it okay? Steven? Sure. Uh, do you think it's doable or do you want me to switch something else? Do you think it's too much? Uh, I mean, it's, uh, I, give you a, I give you a vague application now. I mean, big, big thing. So you can think about it, yeah. you know, you can downsize yeah. it, you can upgrade it, downgrade it, it's up to you, you know? Yeah. I was thinking that we could just have an ADC go in and select the channel and display it on the seven segment displays. That's not bad. See, you number. came with your idea. That's perfect, you know? So, okay. so can you do this, please? Mm -hmm. That sounds good, Stephen? Mm -hmm. Peter? Yeah. Okay, so you know, you know what you're gonna do the ADC channel display on both seven seg plus the VGA. That's fine. Sure. Okay. Then you know, let's go for group H, right? Group. So Edgar, Ian, and Mario, do you like to come with your own project or do you like me to assign your project? Uh, I think we're thinking assign. Mario, what do you think? I don't think Mario's here right now. Ma Mario's not here, right? Yeah. Ian, what do you think? Uh, could you assign us one, please? Sure. So which one do you like? Uh, we're thinking security. Security. So let's go for SHA-1 using UART, uh, <coughs> UART, VGA, and 7 sec. Okay? Okay. 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 Thank you. By the way, SHA-1 has been broken by the team from Google, or I think Microsoft or both, something like that. So it's actually worse to see how they actually broke it. <laughs> okay. You know what I mean, so it's cool to see something like that. Let's go into the group, group I. In a group I, Lois and uh, Edwin and Eduardo, you guys in favor of assigning you the project or do you like to do it by your own self? Uh, assign, preferably. Yeah. Yeah, assign. Please. Security or something else? Uh, security. Agreed. Security, security. Let me see. T algorithm. Okay. So I'm going to pass you the link. T algorithm. It's called T or tiny encryption algorithm. Okay. Uh, there is a ton of papers and internet, there is code, there is everything. And by the way, this algorithm is very tiny. It's very, very tiny, you know, and very simple. <laughs> okay. Most important thing for me, integration and also uh, 
figuring out to read other people's code and adopting and you know modifying their code. That's something very important uh, to be one of the good outcome out of this course. Okay, group J, Dayton, Ryan. You have the only two people work together, right? Uh, yes. Yeah, because Bashley is not taking this. Uh, she's not taking the lab, right? Okay, so in this case, do you like to have your own project or do you like me to assign the project? Uh, I would say assign. Okay, you are VGA. And seven sync. Okay. With switches and whatever. Let me speak about something similar because you have just two people. So uh, have you heard about something called XT? Uh, no. I'll give it to you. It's the friend of T, you know? It's like, <laughs> they are working together, you know, their body, you know? It's called extended, extended T, or extended tiny encryption algorithm, okay? Okay. So you can work close with um, the group I, okay? Uh -huh. So that will be more fair. Because, you know, you have two people, so, you know, since you know they have the T, you have the XT, and then you know I would like to see comparison between both of you. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. Uh, group J, Group K. So Group K, we have Alec, Daniel, Isaiah, and uh, I believe Ashley, right? Yeah. Yes. Are you guys in favor of uh, assigning a project or you would like to introduce your own project? If we could get it signed and maybe something with signal processing. One signal processing? Yes, please. Uh, what about the rest of you guys? Yeah, assign is fine. Signal processing or security? Uh, signal processing. Yeah, uh, sounds good to me too. Let me think about something in signal processing. Can you build um, one dimension plus Fourier transform? You know what's fast Fourier transform, right? Have you heard about a it? A little. I've heard a little bit about it, but I haven't really worked with it too much. You, you, you know, here's a story. Basically, you no. Know, in the signal processing, sometime you know you can work on the signal itself on the time domain. It will be enough for solving the problem of the signal, like you know noise cancellations and all these things, right? Sometimes you know the noise is really quite difficult to uh, recognize in the time domain. So people move to the, another domain and they call it frequency domain. One of the these transformation help you to move from the time domain to the frequency domain is uh, one dimension fast Fourier transform, which is a bunch of the Sine, sinusoidal, you know, uh, transformation like sine wave with cosine wave, and then you know, part of it is gonna be the real number, but it's gonna be imaginary numbers and so on. Okay, so you know, I can actually make it more easy. You can use the discrete cosine transform using something that's called butterfly butterfly approach. There's a ton of papers about this. And there's a ton of even could have been written. You can find it in open cores or, you know, you can find anywhere. You know, actually, I have my own code. I can find it and send it to you. But, you know, in general, you know, what is discrete cosine transform? So here's the thing. First Fourier transform, it has the two uh, parts. It's a complex number theory. So you already have a real number and you have uh, uh, imaginary numbers. And, you know, if you take the imaginary number by itself, they call it... Uh, discrete sign transform. But if you take it from the uh, real number perspective, that means it's gonna be cosine, so it's gonna be discrete cosine transform. So you are taking the cosine part or the real number of the fast Fourier transform 
to do the transformation from the time domain to the frequency domain. One of the possible scenario you can do, you can push a bunch of signals, you know, from the UART as assembled in data, then you know you will go ahead and you know you will transform it into the frequency and you will present the frequency part on the VGA. That's one of the way. But I believe because you're gonna describe this in the in the first Fourier transform or whatever you know transformation frequency, you will need to present real numbers. That means you're gonna have negative and positive, they're gonna be signed and also gonna be fraction in the middle. Okay. So that's the only tricks you're gonna learn. Sounds good? Sounds good, thank you. Yeah, well, yes, thank you. Huh? Yes, that sounds good. Okay, so in that case, I would say that, you know, I finished assigning projects. So we have one team, they're gonna decide by themselves, group D, right? Do you guys like me to write this in the announcement or, you, you know, recording this would be enough? Recording should be enough. I just wanted to um, update you for group D. There's only two of us. What happened with your third? He, I, he said he dropped the class like, <laughs> after, oh, like before yeah, the first yeah, project. Yeah, 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 I remember, I remember it was the chamber problem, yes. Um, yeah. I remember the story. <laughs> okay, so. Uh, so you like me to give you something? Uh, no, we're, we're discussing what we want to do, but we should we should have something figured out by uh, tomorrow morning, and I'll email you um, if not, or you know, with the results. With your decision, but you know, my question for everybody: Do you want me to write now a message to you in the announcement, saying that what it will be what, or you know, that's enough, and you already have the recorded, so you can remember what's happening. Which way you prefer? This should be enough. I mean, because you're you're already uh, doing a lot of explaining. Um, so in the announcements, you know, we won't have that kind of information. Uh, yeah, some 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 people in favor of actually announcements. So you know, maybe I can do I do it now. I prefer to do it everything in front of you, so it will be quite simple. So you know, announcements. You know, uh, ECE thirty three hundred lab. Project Do you uh, witness Wednesday week 15 uh, delivering 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 what demo report report presentation audience the whole plus and people from industry, industry plus NASA. Um, uh, projects, group, project, all, all assigned projects have to use you are VGA uh, seven sig switches LED buttons, right? Group group A group A does what? So group A group A shot three, right? Shot three. Group B, A, E, S, group C, Shaggy, group D, uh, what is group D? Postponed, right? Postponed. Group E. Uh, edit the curve. Public key. Group E. F. Name. 
me F R S A group E uh, A B C D E F G no uh, group A B C D E F I R right F I R filter on chip group uh, A B C D E H H I T Okay. Uh, one dimension discrete cosine transform. Please be aware. Demo. Presentation on or over part of the level. Two fifty or abstract or different one CD or okay sent so now we have it in the announcement and also you already have it in the recording. Okay, sounds good to everybody. Sounds good. Super great. Now we're gonna move our gear to what our lovely part we're gonna learn today, which is called what? UART. How many of you heard about the UART? Okay, so have you ever used it, Chad? Anybody of you try to use UART? Uh, Ashley, did you use it? Oh, what was the project you used it for? Yes, 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 yes. That was with a microcontroller or what? That's not funny. Anyway, so UART standing for it's UART. UART standing for what? Universal. It's universal. Asynchronous. Asynchronous. Receiver. Transmitter. What does it mean? It means that we don't have a real clock monitoring the process. We have something act like a clock. We call it tick. And other people call it what? Baud rate. Baud rate. There is many, many of the programs that, you know, using UART. So UART, it's basically, we have a software side is controlling hardware side. That makes sense? So what is the software side we are talking about? Software side would be placed on where? Would be placed on the PC, right? Can be placed on other master board, or, you know, let's call it head and tail. So the head will be controlling the tail through the software while there is a controller on the other side, be able to receive the signals from the software. That makes sense? 
So normally how it works, we have to have an analog, analog side on our board, which is the FPGA. And this analog thing, it's called FT. Uh, let me show it to you. It's a little itty bitty tiny chip in the back of the board. It's called FT something bridge. Yeah, where is it? So, I don't know how can I show it to you, but you know, there's not enough lights here. I don't know why. So everybody can see my my hand here, right? Can you see my screen, uh, my camera? Yeah. In front of you, there is little two LED nearby the um, here, right? TXRX, 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 right? And this little itty bitty tiny thing that's a micro USB, right? This micro USB, it can be worked as both. It can be worked as a JTAG or can be worked for UART communication. What is JTAG? JTAG is basically used for deploying the stream that you generated using Vivado on the FPGA. So the FPGA will be completely mapped as exactly designed in Vivado, right? But the, the there is a little itty bitty tiny controller. It's called FTI, I believe. So let me let me check for you the name to be hundred percent sure. I have it here. It's called um, I found that you know on my glasses. My reading was not here. This little itty bitty chip. Can you see the little black chip on the top of this uh, extension? This is actually a microcontroller. It's called FTD TDI. Okay, it's called FTDI chip. And this is basically the chip I'm talking about. Let me actually open the share screen with you again. No. This one. This is the FTDI chip. So this is the one you have it on the board, which will allow you to start using what the UART communication. Sounds good? How the UART works is basically based on a protocol. And this protocol is very straightforward, okay? Um, understanding it is basically, you know, everybody know how can you build what somebody can tell me, you know, how can you build serial communication to the parallel, right? Have you ever guys heard about this? Something running in serial, in parallel, and you would like to run in serial. You can do this using finite state machine, right? So what I'm talking about is the following. Imagine that you know you already have here 8 bit. But this 8 bit, you have to feed it to something using the serial. So that means you need something parallel to the serial converter. How you gonna do this? You're gonna basically do it like what? Like a register. One, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Then you're gonna push this eight here. They're gonna be B zero, B one, B two, whatever, to B seven. Then you would like to feed it so you can push serializing here and the B zero will be spilled out to go to the, the port have been designed. What this port can be is basically we have two port. We have TX, we have RX. You have seen this, right? You already have here TXRX and the computer itself, it has TXRX, okay? One of the advice, if you would like to work with UART, that you know the TX of the computer, it has to be connected to the RX of the, um, the board and the RX of the board, it has to be connected to the uh, reverse of the what? The TX of the computer. And the TX of the board will be the, the RX of the computer, so you flip. Don't connect TX to EX, RX, RX. Okay, that's one of the things that you need to learn. Where is those are located in our Vivado? Basically, those guys are located in what? In the XCDC file. So I have here code in front of me written in, in VHDL. I did it a long time ago, but you know, we can find the equivalency of it using the Verilog. Another thing we need to learn about it, if I would like to send a message, from the receiver or to the sender, I have to follow something. What is this? You have to assume that you know your signal is high. So you know this is high and this is low. Okay? So once you will go down from the high to the low, 
to a cycle of time, which is have been calculated by the baud rate, this amount of time when it will be stable enough as a cycle, that will be considered a start of communication. So here is start. After that, you will go here, up, down, up, down, up, down, how many bit of data you're gonna send. Normally on the, on the what's called, on the UART, you can send one bit, you can send two bits, you can send three bits up to eight bits. Some people and some, you know, some books say that you can send up to the nine bit, uh, nine bit. But normally, you know, I would just say eight bit is enough. Okay, so every time you go up here to down, you know, B0 will be uh, shuffled. Here, B1 will be shuffled. B2 will be shuffled up to B8, B7, I'm sorry. Then, you know, you will have here another procedure. You're gonna go from the high to the low to the high again to close the uh, sending a channel. So normally we have to build a finite state machine will act exactly like this. You're gonna be high. Once you have a data from the computer need to be sent, you're gonna force the line to go from high to the low for one cycle. Then you're gonna push it up again. So that means you know the FTGI will figure out that you know you are sending data. But this data from the computer it was parallel. So that means I need a, uh, what shift registers converting it to what serial. You will send it through this uh, pin on the XDC file inside the um, uh, FTGI. FTGI will pass it to the registers whatever you designated or the FIFO for instance we learned last week. And then you know you will start constructing it. You would like to display it on the seven segment display. Do it. You would like to push it in a processing. You can push it into processing. And then you know later on, maybe you would like to push it into another you know communication protocol like VGA. Then people can see it on the screen. So, do you have any questions so far? Any question? Okay, let me share with you whatever I found as a material about the UART and internet. So if I open here my screen and say, yes, I go there. Here is a very nice blog talking about the UART. Okay, exactly as I told you, here's the line is high. Can you see my cursor? Then you know, you're gonna go down, go down for how much time it depends on your baud rate. And then, you know, once you will go down automatically, FDI will consider whatever will be sent after this down in the top, it will be considered data. Then you will keep pushing data, pushing data, feeding data, feeding data, and then you will go down. And then, you know, you'll go up one more time. That means I'm not going to send anymore. So if you would like to send 8 bit by 8 bit by 8 bit, you have to do the same thing over and over and over. So you're going to go high, you go low, then, you know, you go high, then you will start sending whatever bits you have. Then you will go down and then, you know, you will go high again. And then, you know, you have to do it again for the next eight bits. You have to go low and then you high and so on. What we need to do here, we need to write a finite state machine describing such a kind of what design. Everybody agree with me? So in that case, that guy said that, you know, my baud rate will be 16 tick. So that means every, every 16 times, I will produce an output or I will send punch of data. Uh, if you look for an instant, have you, have you guys heard about a software it's called Putty? P-U-T-T-Y. Have you guys used it before? It's P-U-T-T-Y. So Putty, you know, it's one of the software I can use for controlling such a kind of movement. So let me find it to you, P-U-T-T-Y. Uh, here. It's www.p, it's for free, okay? You can download it. You can put it on your, um, in your computer. And then, you know, from there you can write whatever messages and that will be translated into from the parallel to the serial. And then the FTDI, you know, the controller we're gonna write now, it will be re uh, receiving this data and then it will displaying it in a seven segment display or LED or whatever you want. 
okay? So anyway, if you go down further, you will find that he said, and I'm gonna send and, you know, I'm gonna do the tick as I told you, and I'm gonna have a reset and then my data out and, you know, the Rx done signals. So look at him, you know, he tried to send here uh, eight bit of data, he did it here. And then, you know, he did it one more time and he did it one more time by going up and down. So the guy, you know, he's describing here the first part, the first patch of the communication. My communication is basically TX and RX, right? What you hear in front of you here is basically the RX. There is another one, which is the TX. So what exactly I need from the RX? If you look to the, if you look to my Vivado here, if everybody can see my Vivado? Hello, yes. If you go here and you look to, to the constraints, you will find by definition of the constraints, there is a spot for the TXRX. We need to find it together. So here, look, USB RS interface. Those are the same family. So you already have here, look, you have the, uh, the, R, the TX, you have here the RX, and you have something called CTS, and you have something that's called RTS. CTS is setting the, it's the extra setting. You can look at it if you are setting up the priority bit, or you would like the software to do more fancy stuff to control the communication between the PC to the FPGA back and forth. So I don't care that much about it. I like just to have a serial communication protocol that is sending and receiving. The example in front of you here is just like, you know, taking the TX from the FPGA and connect it to the RX of what? The computer. So, you know, my signal in the, in the computer is RX, but you know, this line is actually TX. Look here, U R T X N. Can you see that written here? That's why I told you when you communicate between two devices, be sure that the TX here is going to be RX there and you know the RX here is going to be TX and the reverse. Okay? So what I'm expecting as an RX, I'm going to read it to you in VHDL and then I'm going to show you the verlog. So I have here the RX and I should have a clock source. And I should have like a, every time I would like this uh, operation to happen, a button will allow me to move the data from side to the side. And then I have a reset and I have some enable read and write if I would like to use FIFO in the, in the process. And then I involve it here, the seven segment display. You don't need to care too much about this. You can make it more easy. Just LED will be displaying the work in a moment. Then we need the, the process, right? We need that, you know, we are an idle. That means I'm high all the time. We need the starting state and we sit home. And then, you know, before the starting state, I have to prepare for sending data. So this is extra state. And then I need here state number one, state number two, up to state number seven, then I'm gonna be done. Have you noticed this is very, that's what, that's VHDL. But in Verilog, how are we gonna do it? Either we're gonna use parameter, right? The param, or you're gonna use define. Do you remember that? Yes. Yes. Let's go here and see what is this guy is talking about. So here, look, we came and say Rx, that basically the Rxn, the tick, which is going to be the clock, D out is going to be the data moving there to the computer, and Rx done tick, that means there is the LED will be turning on, that means you know the first patch of data have been received without any problem, and reset if I would like to reset the channel between of the computer and the FPGA. Sounds good? I define here with the old way, input Rx, input clock, and my D out, which is gonna be represented on the seven segment display, or you can put it in a FIFO, you can just connect it to LED so you can see something shuffling out and all of these things. And of course, you know, the tick done is gonna be LED as you can think about it, right? Then, you know, the, the equivalency of the state I showed you in VHDL, that guy made it in a local parameters. You guys agree? So he made actually idle. He considered idle as uh, location zero of the state and he made it what's four to zero. So you have zero, one, they're gonna be the first patch of data as one bit of the eight bit. 
second bit, third bit, fourth bit, fifth bit, sixth bit, seventh bit, eighth bit. And then, you know, he consider bit number nine is what is uh, the bit which is gonna be stop. And then he will repeat this every time. Then to do this, you need a counter. Do you guys agree? And that counter will be periodically same size of this local param. So that's actually make it four to zero. And then you know how many states I'm gonna have from your point of view, it's gonna be eight states. So at the end of the day, I'm talking about what? Three bit to describe the states, right? Because you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yes, okay. Then, you know, he started with the process. What is the process he think about it? He came and said that, you know, there is a period of time, it's gonna be 16 tick. So what he's doing here, he make the, the skeleton of the, the process which is always block positive edge of the clock of the S tech. And then, you know, he has a case statement since we are behavior and he started defining state by state, right? We said everything is smooth, right? That means, you know, you're gonna go high to low in a certain amount of time. Then you have to give a certain period of time for the first bit to be placed inside the register. Then the second bit will be pushing the first bit to be taken in lead and the third will push and so on like a, what serial, uh, serial parallel shift registers. So look, the guy said is the following. If I'm in idle state and my Rx is equal zero, huh, look, we said, you know, normally it should be high. High, I have to be idle, right? But when my Rx go down, that mean I might go what? Huh? I might be defining myself as a start. Do you guys agree? So as long as I'm high, I'm not sending any data. Do you guys agree? But the day that, you know, I'm going down, I'm a potentially sending data or I'm in the process to start sending data. But, you know, I have to be waiting for a certain amount of time to declare that I'm sending data, right? The, the definition of the designer of the UART, like IBM, they came and say, I need to stay a certain amount of time. This certain amount of time is not related to the main clock. It's related into what? The tick clock, right? So what this guy's saying, is saying that, okay, live, live this slow, low to be low enough so I can consider it what? A start uh, point. He said, okay, since you know, I'm actually starting in 16 tick, so I'm gonna take half of it. So basically he's saying seven because you know, he counts zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So if the counter is equal seven, that means he counted eight cycles of tick and I'm low enough. That mean I, I'm not done, I'm not done, but I'm actually ready to go and what? Send data. That makes sense? And my, you know, please, I reset the counter because I will do this job again with the second state. And technically my, my D out, the whole entire 8-bit register, I would like to see it as an output zero because nothing has been sent. Then if not, if not, keep incrementing the counter. So that means what he's doing, he keep adding time until the time comes to seven, then he will move to the next state. Until now, everything is clear? Anish, Rohat. Ashley, everything's fine? Okay. Now, it's a moment to start the, huh, start what the register, which is the serial parallel, right? So now what I'm doing, I keep pushing data inside so I can get it and dis display it on LED or seven state. So now I'm in the moment of actually what pushing B zero, right? So in this actually I'm have to wait what double of the time to be sure the data already placed in the register. Who is pushing the Rx? Because you know, this is a wire coming from the software, right? So I am ready, I am ready to go to the next movement of the shifting if the counter is 15. That means 16 tick of time double of the time when I started with the state. So think about it like this. Don't, don't worry about the seven and 15. You can change the rate, it's up to you. But you know, state start, it's half of the sending the data. 
So if it's this eight of the start, that means you know every bit will take eight uh, twice of the start. So 15s, I'm sure that I'm moving to the next state, which actually I have to also reset the counter because I'm gonna do this again. But you know, my Rx as a coming from the XDC, which is basically coming from what? Huh? Coming from the software party or whatever, will be placing into the data out zero. That means, you know, I have eight location of the registers. The first data out zero, I already put it with a value. Not, I'm gonna start counting so I can have enough time to move up to the movement of the data one. Then I will do the same thing with the data one to the data two. I will move the same thing with data two to the data three. Then I will move this to data four, data five, data six, data seven, and in data seven, what happened? I don't need too much to think about the parity and you know um, whether that it's odd parity or even parity and all of these things. So what I can do in the sevens, I will come and say, you know what, move to idle and inform Muhammad that you know I'm done with what filling the eight location of data. So the LED will be flickering in a certain amount of time showing you that, you know, data placed in, our, in the right location. And of course, you know, the counter will be counting if the 15th is not there, you will go back and that's gonna be infinity. So what you did, you shaped the, you shaped the protocol of sending the data high all the time when I'm gonna start, but you know, once it will go down into certain amount of time, that means I will move to the next state. And then, you know, that periodically eight times replacing data, then I will return it back from the beginning. Once the data will come, I will move and so on. Did you see how it's really easy? It's a pretty much easy, okay? Then the guy, because you know, I actually, I like this website. That's why I, I picked it up because the guy described it to you in a way that is, is unfolded and he gonna fold it to make it more, um, looks like professional or uh, what professional uh, code. One of, the, one of the questions I would like to ask you guys, do you think there is a way for me to decrease number of lines I wrote here? I can tell you something. Have you noticed? D, d, data zero, data one, data two, data three, data four, data five, data six, data seven. Have you noticed something? All of them together, all of them together are identical. The only thing is what the, the index of the data out is different. Everybody agree with me? Genvar, yes. See, you know, Shad is tricky, you know. Or he can use integer, yes, because you need integer index. So that's one of the things that's really good. So you can actually combine all of this from data zero to data seven in one what? One state. Let's see how he already finishes. So see, now if you look closely, you may have realized that all states are from data zero to data six, practically does the same thing, except the last one, of course, is you have to go and jump to idle. So you can make some if statement there if you would like to add it as well, right? So what he invented, he invented a bit counter, which will help him to go from data zero to data six. Okay, so that's called bit count. Then let's look for the code after he what folded together. So he came into the conclusion, you know, my idol is the same, right? And then he made a new state is called data. And what he did look, he came count four uh, to 15. I'm gonna move to data again. And my data out will be the Rx concatenated with the seven to zero, seven to one, I'm sorry. So that means he's actually shifting. And he keep incrementing bit count plus one, right? So he will increment it. He will increment also counter by one. And then, you know, he will check every bit count. It will be zero, uh, seven. You're gonna stop and you will leave and you will clear the tech. If not, you will increment the counters. And after that, he will just move to the last one, which it was the data eight. And he call it data or stop and he make it to move to the idle while you know the tick is happening. So did you see what he did? You can make it unfolded like this. Same code will give you the same result by incrementing by a new internal counter is called bit count. 
and he add it into the thing and he make it data um, stage. So if you notice very clearly, you already have an idle state and you know embedded inside the idle state, we made the starting state. And then you know we came into the conclusion that you know we need data. So we are sending the actual data from the computer. And then you know we are stopping the process moving backward to the idle, waiting for the new batch of data to be sent from the computer. Any questions so far? Any problems so far? <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry about that. So if it's clear, I have news for you. We are done with UART. Because it's like back and forth, right? We made a channel now for, you know, from the computer to the board. We need another one from the reverse. The reverse one is like a little bit changed, small change, you know what I mean? I will show it to you. So now we just built a clevering thing. We just need a very nice always block which is gonna be a latch kind of saying that, you know, I'm starting with idle and I'm just counter, uh, my counter setting it as a reset state and then it's gonna be equal one. So they're gonna be actually working as an asynchronous reset. And the guy actually left a very nice sample test bench out for this UART RX. Now I'm gonna share with you, my code was written in VHDL. Some people will come and say, well, we are in VHDL. You know, we are in very low class. We are 3000 level people. You know, we have to learn differently than just like, you know, taking order from the instructors. We have to think in a different opening way. So you guys will have better chance for getting a high rank job. This is basically what my target. I want to help you to get in a high rank job. It's not just like, you know, getting a grade and leave, okay? So far, you guys are doing good. I noticed that, you know, and also I, I think from the way that I'm looking to the quiz number two, you guys are actually improving. Okay, and also from the lab, you guys looks improving, you know? So if I look to the, if I look to my code here, I did the same thing. Have you noticed? Everybody look at me now. I have here what states, idle, start, uh, semi thing and B0 to B7. Have you noticed, you know, those three guys with his code, they were just like idle, right? And he made B8 somehow here to be the stop and that's it, right? And then, you know, I made here an integer like, you know, Luis, what he was talking about, about the tick. What is this tick story? I need to tell you what is tick story. Do you know that there's the baud rate I'm talking about it's a way of generating a new clock. And if you are generating a new clock, basically you are using clock what? Huh? Divider. And using clock divider, you need a debouncer. And the debouncer is something very easy. You take the signal, you pass it in three different flip-flops, you take output of all of them, ending them together, they're gonna be the new output of the debouncer. That's called debouncer, okay? So, let me tell you a story. You know, this code in, in VHDL, I made it more complicated, but for a reason, because, you know, I'm using also display so I can see, you know, the output on the, on the board and see how it's flickering and all these things. And also I'm involving here FIFO so you can fill the data, you know, eight, did you see the D, uh, D out? The D out that we generated? I'm actually pushing in FIFO so you can save it if you would like to make some process on this data. And um, uh, I made two different type of FIFO, there is no problem, but you know, here, look, what I'm doing is the following, right? And um, actually data out is considered for me as a signal for you as a register. And I'm pushing it inside what, inside the FIFO. Okay. And I'm making data validation, don't worry about this. Now, the gen here, the, the thing that in front of you, this processing is always block used for generating the baud rate. And in the baud rate, I have my clock coming from XDC is 100 megahertz. Do you guys agree? 
if you look to the baud rate, if you look to the baud rate, basically the definition is saying the following. How many bits you will be able to move from the UART is equivalent to the frequency of the board is 100 megahertz, right? Divided by the, 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 the speed of the data sent from the party. Let me see if I have party in my computer so I can share it with you and I can show you what I mean. So party, I think I have it, so. Everybody see party here in front of me? Hello? Yeah. Okay. So if you look here, we have serial, see? Serial, and then, you know, you have to be sure that, you know, what is the board is connected to which one. I haven't actually placed any bit file or bit stream in the top of the board, right? So I haven't no, I have no idea what will happen. We'll try it. So if you look at serial here, right, you will select which communication uh, um, line is connected to it, okay? Can be COM, COM1, COM2, COM3, whatever, right? Look at the speed, pawn. You can decide your speed. So for instance, if it's 9600, um, nine, so if you have a calculator with you and saying 100, 100, Oh, one second, stay with me. One second, one second, stay with me. Are you out? Okay, uh, which one? The nearby my office, right? Uh, yeah, don't have okay, one second, one second. Uh, one second, guys. I have to open to uh, one of the skills. Yeah. One second, guys. Uh, pause. Uh, yes. Here we go. Okay. Finish the project and pass it to the guy from IBM. Okay. Anyway, sorry, guys. Um, you are with me, guys. Hello. Hello. Yes, we're still here. Yeah, sorry, you know, that was something, you know, I'm doing with IBM. Anyway, so, you know, the bot, the bot rate is like, look, how many data bits you would like to send, right? You see eight. It can be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. If you say 16, you know, it will say okay for you, but it will not work as it should be. You know what I mean? So we say here eight. And then, you know, how many stop bits you would like to have? Normally it's one bit, you know? Uh, the parity, you would like to have a parity or not. You don't need to have a parity. Uh, row control, did you see the CT and, you know, uh, RST, the one, you know, it was in XDC files? Those guys, you know, are those. You can say none because, you know, I, I'm not using them. Those are very, very, uh, like, high thing that if you are writing a driver from the software side in C, okay? Then, you know, the 9600, there are different rates. So um, maybe I can find you the rates here. So popular rates, popular, popular, you uh, are pod rates. So normally, you know, the pod rates, everybody can see my screen here, right? So the pod rates, it can be 110, 300, 600, 1200, 2400, 2400, 4800, 9600, whatever number, uh, 19,200, whatever, 30, whatever, uh, these big numbers, you can go up to the 25th, uh, 256,000 bits per second. You know, what does it mean, the baud rate? It means that, you know, per second, I can send from a location to the other this amount of bits, which defining something is called what? Bandwidth. Have you guys heard about this word bandwidth? So normally your art is not super cool. Why? Because this small amount of data per second. You know, look at, there is another, another communication protocols. It's called uh, PCIe. How, have you, how, how many of you heard about PCIe?
Yes, PCIe is basically on the, let me show you PCIe. Uh, PCIe. Sizer. PCIe, like, uh, where's my PCIe? Wait, uh, I'll bring it here. I have a big mess here, no? Uh, here is PCIe. Uh, Here, nope, that's an SPGA. Uh, that's an FPGA. Um, FPGA, uh, it was like a 15K, $15,000. Look, it has what? Did you see this part? Th this part is a PCIe, okay? And of course it has a fan, it's like a GPU and stuff like that, it's very high tech. It has a mil, uh, it has billion transistor and around one million uh, lookup table. Okay, so PCIe, there is a ton of communication protocols. You know, I wish I could give it to you, but you know, there is a high level course of this. You know, the forty three or five or something like that. It can have more communication protocols. You can think about it. There is another one. It's called SPI. There is another one is called I square C. There is another one is called PCI. And then you know the PCI got upgraded to PCIe. PCIe itself, it has gen, uh, gen one, gen two, gen three, generation four. And you know, generation four is very high uh, bandwidth. That means the amount of data per second you can push it from a location to the others is really quite high. It can be by giga, gigabit per second. So your art is really quite cool, but it's not really like, Fantastic, you know what I mean? But it's a very good, nice step to learn the higher and the higher level. So have you noticed from here, they said the default value is at what, 9,600, right? Which is correct. Look, you know, PAT itself made the, the thing 9,600. So does it make sense to everybody? Huh? Hello? So anyway, if you look to this one, I can just say, I can look to the rest of the code and you know, we can go through it together. It's not that important to learn VHDL or Verilog. I just need the concept. So, you know, look here, for instance, you know, I made literally something we learned before, right? I made what, huh, somebody can tell me. I made what, I made a clock what generator or the clock divider. So that high clock, 100 megahertz, somehow we broke it up to be a fraction of the 10,000. So the on itself, 5,000. So that means, you know, that in total, 10,000. So 10,000, you know, that means, you know, I downgraded the 100K to 100 mega to see, you know, 100, 100 million divided by the, you know, 10,000, see what the ratio will be, right? Then that's gonna be the new clock. And then I took this new clock because I am afraid about the meta stability of the rising edge. And you know, the timing stable, you know, time uh, holding time and setup time. How can you actually be sure that meta stability will not happen? One of the solution is to do debouncing. And what is debouncing? That means there is three registers, one pass to the others, see? And you will take the, those three guys and you end them together. They're gonna be the buttons for the slowing down the whole process. Then don't worry about the display, don't worry about the FIFO, that's something easy you can learn. And then, you know, look at the most important part, which is the seven segment display. Look, so, you know, if the enable happen with the counter is high, go ahead and, you know, move the data. What is this value 5208? If you multiply it by two, you will figure out what's the value of how many bits you're gonna send per second. So this number coming from what, if you notice, this number coming from this guy. Uh, here, 5210, 
Five two one zero. Can you divide it? So five two. Where is my calculator? So five two one zero divided by two. It's gonna be a number which is gonna be roughly two thousand six hundred something, which is fine because you know end of the day it's not that far from the number here because you know this number is gonna be multiply of it minus two, so that's gonna be five two zero eight. Then you will generate your internal counter. It's a little bit complicated than the guy describing, but anyway, look at this one. So you know he made here the same story I did. You know, he said if it's zero, you would start if and be valid, and you will just go to one. Then he went to one, and then you know he started also to debouncer. Then you know he moved into the counter, and in this counter he made it instead of sixteen tick like this guy made. Do you guys remember the guy? He made it seven. And then after that, every 15, he will move from one to the others. No, here I made it three because I used a different baud rate. And then from there, you know, I go to five. And then from five, I go to seven. From seven, I go to nine. Nine, I go to the 11. So I add two cycles and I made the cycle completely relax. He made it 16. And then, you know, from there, 13, 15, 17. And from there, he closed up to the 19. And 19, it was his B8. And then, you know, that was went to the idle. And the data valid for me, it's what the the one he made as, um, and let me see, that's his data. Uh, the data out for me or a data invalid is basically the Rx done tick for him. And you know, he made the validation and that's it. Let me see if I can deploy it in front of you and make it run open hardware manager. So the project, okay. Then you know, say flow, open hardware, open target. Open hardware device. So everybody can see my board. Hello. Yes. So my board here. Look. I have a bunch of switches, and I'm not sure which one is which one. So I have to see from my XDC what is happening, right? So because I don't remember this. Oh, the board turned off. Ah, size. Anyway, so. That's one, that's one. Uh, we'll go into the constraint XDC file. So we have a button here. It's RX uh, pushing from the computer. And we have here a read enable, which is going to be one of the switch. And we have the RAS. And then we have the reset the display. And you already have the display here. And here, you know, I would like to dis display the 8 eight bit in LED as well. And then I have a UART validation bit to be turning on in front of me. I didn't use any swatches. So a bunch of them are just buttons. And those are the buttons I have, right? So look what I did. I reset it. And now in two digits will be representing the output because I have eight bit to represent it. Each one will be taken four. You guys agree? So I just reset it in front of you. Now I need to go to party and I need to see which communication thing is actually working. So how can I do this? I can actually device manager, right? Device. How many of you use uh, uh, Linux? Yeah, I actually, honestly, I like Linux, you know? The thing on Windows is annoying, you know? Look, you know, I have to be whatever, whatever, whatever. It's, Ridiculous. Uh, so if I take this, what will happen? I took the board, right? So what communication protocol now? So I just have COM3. So I believe it's gonna be one of the COMs. So if I do it like this, uh, man. Let me see what will happen here. Okay, go. Cool. 
So either 2021, right? Those are only two one I can use, okay? 2021. So keep it here on the side and you know we have to deploy again. So open managers, hardware, open. Program device, I program the device and I can push reset. So I push reset here, right? Then I go in, in the party, I will try 20 and 21. I think it's gonna be trial and error. So if I say yeah, like this, it's not allowing me, so 20. Why? Uh, I say serial and from there say open. I read the message here, but what happened? Where is my party? So if I open party again. Okay, party. Uh, serial communication 21. Uh, yeah, it's open here, right? Everybody can see my screen is like, look what happened, right? Everybody can see what I'm doing on the screen. Hello. Yeah. What I'm, what I'm doing literally, actually I'm writing in my keyboard. So I'm gonna write H. See, H is basically converted now to what? Huh? ASCII. And it came in front of you, right? On the, look at my uh, camera. Everybody can see my camera, right? Uh, let's write B. B is 62 in the ASCII. And you know, it wrote also in front of you the, um, what's called, the, um, the meaning in the, what's in LED. T, what will be? 74. Uh, R, 70, whatever. You know, blah, 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 blah. I'm just playing with my keyboard now. <laughs> so what Professor, we did, yes. Are you writing this in PuTTY? Yeah. I'm writing in PuTTY, but you cannot see anything, right? <laughs> yeah. Because what happened, I'm using my keyboard. There is a way in a party we can also set up to see what's going on. So let me actually go in party again, party, and we can figure out how can we make it visible to everybody. Do you guys remember which one we used? We used uh, which COM20, right? 20, and the baud rate actually used for this code, it was 9,600, okay? Uh, how can I make a keyboard visible? <sighs> there was a way, but I forgot it, but you know, oh man. In the terminal, can you see that I can see? Force, force maybe? I don't know, let's see. Oh, it didn't help me to do COM uh, 20, so maybe it's 21. So party. <sighs> see, that's one of the thing about the ugly, what's ugly windows. Yeah, I hate it. Uh, off uh, then, uh, terminal keyboard application application and then you know bum, 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 bum. be nice yeah 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 it worked see I'm writing look everybody can see what I'm doing yeah when I write something I do enter Look, it's actually fast. Something is actually flickering, right? So I can just go like this and go like that. It's not allowing me to write. You have to work in the system, you know? Because if you notice, you know, sometime, you know, the, the first LED is what doing what? Flickering. Can you guys notice that? Yeah. It's flickering because you know the enter key. So I have to go into the, it's something in the setup of the party, but you know, I have done it many times. One second, let me see. Party. Yay. 
be a nice buddy, you know. Yeah, he's not a good boy. He's a good boy. Uh, 21. Then we're gonna go in a serial. We, we we didn't we didn't design any flow control, so we said none. Now, what is the problem with your initial state of the cursor key, initial state of the numeric keyboard? Okay, maybe that's gonna be the solution. Let's see. And we kind of yeah. Now it's working. Uh, It's not writing anything, right? Ah, but at least you know my I know what I'm doing and my you know my keyboard here. I'm writing by my hand, you know. So for instance, you know, A 61, uh, S 73, uh, 78, W is 77, Q is 71. If I make it cup blocks, oh, when I make it like you know, uppercase is different than lowercase. Look. 41 in, in uppercase, if I go A again, lowercase, it's gonna be 61, you know what I mean? You can just check the ASCII code thing. So, you know, here's ASCII, I can show you. Ah, ASCII, ASCII keyboard. Here's our lovely table, you know? <laughs> no. Where is the ASCII? I need to see the ASCII. Nah, and I ASCII codes. No, I don't want this. Uh... No, no, there was the ASCII. I need the ASCII table. ASCII table. Table. Right? Look at this, right? Uh, he said 67. No, I need the key with the, what is the key? Hey, look, A hey, here, see uppercase. Can you see guys my cursor? A is uppercase, it should be 41, right? So if I make uppercase and I push A, Oh, I have to go in the pot here, right? What happened in front of you? 41, right? A B uppercase, it should be what? 66, right? B uppercase. Huh? Oh no, it's lowercase, okay. See, 62. Did you understand what I'm doing, right? So it should be fun, you know, but at least, you know, everybody understood, you know, how it works. And what is the concept? And it should be clear, right? Any questions so far? Professor, uh, I know you mentioned earlier, but I was wondering if you can elaborate on the debouncing. Do you want the lab on the debouncer? No, no, can you elaborate on yeah, the yeah, debouncer? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go to the debouncer. You know, here's my code. Here's my code. The debouncer I made just to slow the, um, the switch. You know, the switch is fast, you know what I mean? Have you noticed the switch? The, the buttons we have, these buttons right. are very, very fast. So I want to slow it down. How can I slow it down? Basically what you can do, you can take the switch input, push it into three or four or five or seven uh, stages of flip-flops, okay? Then you will take every single output that which is gonna go input to the next uh, switch, right? and you will just end them together. They're gonna be the debouncers. So I can draw it in front of you on the on my tablets, one second. So if you look to my codes here, this is the debouncer, okay? So read enable, the one which is helping me to fill the FIFO. I didn't fill the FIFO in front of you, right? But you know, uh, generally what I can do I can just turn it on to the, one second. Uh, one, two, three, yes. Everybody can see my screen, right? Now, can you see my tablet? Yeah. Okay, so by the code I wrote, you know, what I'm expecting is the following. I have here a flip-flop, I have here a flip-flop, I have here another flip-flop, right? And those guys have, clock like this. 
and I made them what synchronized. So that means all of the clock the same. And this clock is gonna be the clock bounce. That means the clock is got divided, right? <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, what was the rate of this clock in the, in the, in the, in the code? It was count time five thousand. So that mean uh, ten thousand. So and you already have hundred megahertz. So from there, and then the other one is gonna be hundred thousand, ten thousand. You make the ratio and figure it out, like we did with the clock divide. But anyway. Now, you know, I have here my button, right? My button is called RAZ. I want it to be slow. What should I do? So the best I can do, I can here get this one is called up zero. And this one will be up one. And this one is called up two. If you want to make it for more, you know, make more, right? And then, you know, you will take all of those guys and you will end them together. The new output is going to be RAZ underscore bounds or debounds. So what you did, you add delay perspective. You slowed down the, the switch from being fast while you're clicking, right? To make it slower. So then, you know, the speed of the 100 megahertz will not affect too much on me while I'm filling manually by my hand in this example. So that's actually the debouncer. Do you have any questions? That makes sense. Uh, thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions, guys, so, uh, regarding the UART, especially the RX? Is it everything clear to everybody? Yes, Professor. Okay. I'm very happy that you guys are actually fast learners. So uh, what I'm going to say is the following, right? So I'm gonna, um, you know, it's everything, everything's clear now. I'm gonna pass you the, the educational thing that I showed you on the internet also in the, in the announcements. And also I'm gonna pass you the, the link of party. So, you know, what I'm gonna do because I don't want to forget because I have a ton of other works so I can just do like this. And then, you know, I write you a fancy uh, announcement so you guys can just take it, okay? Like, you know, we're gonna go here, CVV and for those people who like, he doesn't want to watch the record video, but I would recommend to watch the record video. It's really easy. Uh, it's 300. I'll just say here, create announcement. And you know, you are, ah, Shiza. Yeah. You are uh, material. One, the education blog. About how to use your art RX. Okay, so where is this link? That link it was somewhere here. This one, right? Um, copy. Then to the party as a software. Where is party? Party. Three ASCII field. Uh, any other thing that you would like me to add? I think those are only three things that you know I mentioned here, and I would love you guys to look at it. And that would be awesome that you know if you work by hand to realize the code and see by yourself how it's gonna work. I love to see this from you. And of course, they're gonna be also counted inside your uh, final project. Any questions so far? Huh? Hello? Hold on, just... In that case, I can say that, you know, we finished today our first series of lectures about what serial communication protocols. 
And um, what, I can what I can recommend you to look at this care carefully, you try to build it by yourself. If you have any problem, then I can build it with you next time. That makes sense? I want you to start like, you know, get more independence and you work by your hand. At least you understand the concept. And now it's the so time for you to build this up by hand and see what will be the output. Okay, Duke. Professor, quick question. Yeah. Um, once we finish the VGA lecture, what will come after that, apart from the exams? The VGA? Yeah, isn't that next week? The VGA will be next week, and uh, I might also give you the PWM as well. PWM is really easy. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. It's not just you know. I want you to while you're while you're thinking about why we are taking all of this in this course to think about what, one important thing. There is two ways you know people follow in education, right? Just some materials you are doing well, you got the grade, and you leave. But is this the uh, real life like that? Of course not. So the most important thing to also learn as a practical, because you know we are engineer and we are in a politic university. So end of the day, we have to learn some advanced stuff and that will help you in your uh, future career. You know, my eye on your future career, I'm, I'm no doubt that you're gonna do a good job with the uh, grade. Okay? Okay, thank you. Thank you guys. So in that case, I would say thank you guys. I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, uh, load the recorded uh, video, and I think one of you said something by mistake. I put a photo behind or something like that. Yes, for week eleven video. You sure about that? So I can't investigate it. So, uh, what was the day of this lecture? Uh, uh, the second. That was November second, right? Yes. So easy. So it is 300. And that was what? November 2nd. Okay, I will work on that and I will update it. I will double check now. Okay. Any other questions? Any concern? In that case, I would say thank you, guys. It was my pleasure to talk to you today. And it was my even pleasure that, you know, to work with you through the semester. And, you know, I'm looking forward to see your creativity in the project side and also, you know, for the last lab. And, you know, I'm sure that you guys are doing great and I hope that you're doing great. God bless you, stay safe. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor. Have a good day. Thank you, God bless you, thank you.